So to finish uh, section breakdown of this concept design uh, this biomechanical humanoid figure, we're gonna uh, wrap it up with the lower leg and the foot um, and talk about the way to break this down. The calf area typically is a cylinder kind of mixed with a cone. So you kind of have this evolving form and then your foot, at least from the outside edge, uh, is kind of this triangular boxy wedge shape. And then on top of that, you can build a little bit of mus muscular anatomy pretty quick, get the calf muscle in on the back and go from there. So as we embellish and go into playing around and creating the biomechanical uh, layer on top, remember that this layer has to kind of adhere to and go around and relate to those larger forms that you just created. Um, there's this long bit of piping thing that goes down the outer edge of the of the um, leg here. And when you do this, you're kind of aware that you're looking down on the foot. So most of the time, it's going to be as if you're looking down on the cylinder. So the arcs kind of will bottom out. And every once in a while, you can wrap lines around these forms. Or if there's a flat area, use form following marks. Um, to indicate the direction and shift in plane. Um, it's as if you're taking a little cross section and, and uh, a little slice and wrapping the line around that, that outer edge of that slice. So um, as you embellish and add on like I'm doing here, I'm kind of thinking about how these forms overlap each other. And I want to make sure that that I pay attention to any forms that kind of continue or wrap around or give me an outer edge, um, any forms that project one further than the other. And what I don't want to do is break any of the things that I set up initially. Um, so one of the basic concepts of doing figure drawing is this idea of, uh, of grounding the figure and making sure that it that it has weight and balance. So I want to be sure that I develop a relationship with the ground as I develop my um, concept design. You, you know, you see a lot of floating figures drawn sometimes, but that doesn't really show you how the figure interacts with its environment. And part of character design isn't just designing what the character look, looks like, you're kind of designing how it might move or how it might stand um, or what kind of attitudes and postures that the character has. So this one's pretty firmly rooted to the ground and it has these weird sort of tenderly toes and, and um, fingers uh, that are kind of wire-like that reach out to the ground to help it kind of feel. And while that's kind of a conceptual idea, it does translate visually pretty well. So. That's something that we want to be sure to uh, to put in. As you go through and develop the shadows um, and cast shadows and shadow cores, you want to go into each form that you set out and use what you know about cast shadows and shadow cores to emphasize the, the form. Um, you don't want to emphasize the contour too much because that'll flatten out the image. And the strength of, of going about a design in this way is that you are able to articulate all of this dimension detail and um, convey it in a three-dimensional way.